The Danish artist Peter Merk Munstad belongs amongst the greatest landscape painters in history and his work reflects a mix of modernity, realism and romanticism. Munstad was born in 1859 in a small town in the easternmost area of Jutland, Denmark and during his long career he painted numerous stunning landscapes across Europe ranging from lush green forests to snowy northern European winter scenes to North African Orientalist images. His style can be characterized by a combination of a very detailed observation of nature, which was common during the Danish Golden Age of painting, with smooth brushstrokes and an impressionist sensitivity to capturing natural light. In this video I will show you many of the works by Munstadt, and if you are interested in learning much more about this artist or have some of his art at home, I actually created a beautiful coffee table book about his work. And it is available worldwide. I will put a link to the book in the description box below. Munstadt crafted his own path to success and uniqueness. He first studied for three years at the Royal Danish Academy of Art but he left before graduating to study with Peter Severin Kroyer, whose work you can see here. Kroyer was an emerging Danish artist who opened Munstadt's eyes to different and more modern painting styles. Kroyer notably exposed him to painting outdoors and bolder brushstrokes, a technique that was not taught at the Royal Academy. Next, Monstad wanted to travel through Europe to explore the diverse landscapes and find his passion. On his travels he studied for a few months with William Adolf Bouguereau, one of the, if not the most influential art teacher in the world at that moment. Bouguereau advocated a more unrestricted use of the brush, with more sweeping, sketchy brush strokes, where the brush was essentially an extension of the arm. This refined virtuoso technique resulted in lighter and livelier works compared to the short and precise strokes Munstadt had learned at the Royal Danish Academy of Art. So when you look from a distance at the work of Munstadt, they appear photorealistic, which may suggest short and precise brushwork. But if you stand close to this work, or zoom in a bit, you may see that this technique essentially creates the impression of detail. To see the impact of Bouguereau's lessons, compare for example Summer Days opposite Hammeren Bornholm from before his visit to Bouguereau with an afternoon stroll painted a few years later. The first work shows a sweeping view of the landscape surrounding the ruined castle of Hammershus. Munstadt paints the landscape in the bright light on an afternoon in late summer using short and precise strokes. In contrast, the brush strokes in an afternoon stroll are more in line with Bouguereau's technique. So while his earlier work was painted with great precision and attention to detail, it looks duller than the later work, which focuses on the dynamic interplay between the light and the landscape, resulting in a livelier landscape scene. Munstadt's technique gradually evolved during his career. But the one common element across his oeuvre is his focus on accurately capturing the light of each season and area he painted. His picturesque landscapes of his native Denmark constitute the majority of his oeuvre, but Munstad travelled widely from Norway to the Alps to North Africa. He found his favourite spots in Europe which he would visit many times, and early in his career this included North Africa. Here you can see some works painted in that area, and the difference in atmosphere compared to his paintings elsewhere is very noticeable. Another area that Munstadt loved were the Alps and snowy scenes. In the first half of his career he would visit the Swiss Alps almost every year, and in the last part of his career he found similarly beautiful snow scenes a bit closer to home by visiting the area of Lillehammer, Norway. But as much as he travelled during his life, he would always return to his native Denmark, where he would paint all across the country, eternalizing its beautiful nature. 
And while Mundstadt painted his landscapes in each season of the year, the two major landscape themes in his oeuvre were lush green forest landscapes and snow landscapes. For example, have a look at A Forest Stream, painted in 1905. It's one of his tranquil forest views. The flowers on the left bank indicate that he painted this view in spring and the first leaves on the tree stretching over the small stream allow enough light to come through despite the cloudy sky. Munstadt combined his characteristic attention to detail with relatively smooth brushstrokes of various sizes to create a realistic yet lively view of this Danish landscape. And notice how Munstadt used somewhat broader brushstrokes for larger areas like the water, rocks and trees, while using more precise touches for the small leaves and flowers. Many of these nature scenes included some body of water. Birch Forest in the Autumn Light, for example, illustrates how Munstadt effectively uses the water surface as a mirror of nature. You can see how he painted the green algae and falling leaves in the water, but most of all he captured the reflection of the birch trees, foliage and the sky with great accuracy. Water lilies on a pond is another beautiful example of how he treated the natural elements on top of the water differently from the reflections in the water. The flowering water lilies are painted with much more clarity than the hazy reflections of nature in the water. It also illustrates that while Munstadt had an impressionistic sensitivity to light, he did not paint in an impressionist style. Instead of capturing a quick impression of the water surface, like Claude Monet did in his numerous scenes of water lilies, Munstadt aimed for a hyper-realistic impression of the water pond. Besides these kinds of forest scenes, the other passion of Munstadt were snowy scenes. Look for example at Winter Sun in the Engadin, painted in 1914 in Switzerland. Very different from a quiet forest scene, here he captured the crisp winter landscape in all its glory, including the crystal clear water in the mountain stream. Similar to his forest scenes, the impact of light is central to the composition, captured through its reflection in the snow and water. And here are some scenes he painted a few years later in the Liliamer area, all demonstrating his ability to capture the crisp winter air with remarkable realism. Sunlit winter landscape particularly illustrates how Munstadt created many shades of white to capture the interaction between the sunlight and the snow surface. In line with some of his Danish colleagues, Munstadt considered nature as a symbol of purity, searching for beautiful views that were largely devoid of human presence. For most of his works, Munstadt started from scratch after selecting a view to paint. He typically chose a serene, romantic view devoid of the increasing industrialization that swept through society during his life. And these works were very popular during his life, and he sold his works with great ease, including clients from the Danish royal family and the Russian Tsar. As he sold his works to many diverse clients across Europe, relatively few of his paintings have ended up in museums. The large majority is still part of private collections and sells for healthy prices at auction. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the art of Peter Merck Munstadt. There is much more to learn about him and if you're interested I can recommend checking out my new book about his life and art. You can find more information about that in the description box below this video. As always, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up button and subscribe and I hope to welcome you again in another video. Thanks for watching.